West Coast reels under Holocaust as the men and weapons of the atomic age battle to the death against the ageless monster of the deep. Chidri, hello. My name is Kevin. I am the Dapper Man, and today I'm reviewing the movie It Came From Beneath the Sea. This is a 1955 Harry Harryhausen film, and a year later, most of the crew did another movie, and that was called Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. I did a review on that and talk about it. I have the link somewhere above on the video, and you can see the link below in the comments and everything else. This movie was directed by Robert Corden. Robert Corden was a director mostly for television shows, not that of movies, and there's also a different writer. The writer's name is Hal Smith. Now, this is not to be confused with the Hal Smith as the voice actor who did the voicing for Al and Winnie the Pooh television shows, or for that of John Avery in The Adventures of Odyssey. This is the Hal Smith, or better known as Harold Jacob Smith, which did the 1958 The Defiant Ones, and also that of 1960's Inherit the Wind. He also did a television movie, Inherit the Wind, also as a writer. It Came From Beneath the Sea was also double-billed with a movie called The Creature with the Adam Brain, which was also produced by Sam Katzman, and also had one of the actors from Earth vs. the Flying Saucer. We open with a scene of a nuclear submarine where the men are bored from action. However, they get more than what they bargain for when something is showing up on the radar and it eventually collides with their vessel. Nothing is known about it except for the fact that it is radioactive. The captain returns to Borough Harbor for repairs and discovers something is attached to it, so it is now being investigated by Dr. John Carter and Professor Leslie Joyce. The professor tries to explain his part of an enormous sized squid due to the H-bomb, but they don't really listen. It's partly because she's a woman. They're led by a woman. What does a woman know? Men. Hey! It doesn't take very long before the creature arrives from the sea and starts wrecking havoc in San Francisco. That's pretty awesome. This creature begins destroying every national monument, which is very much a staple in every Ray Harryhausen film. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is not one of my favorite Ray Harryhausen films. It's probably not just for the special effects. The special effects are grand. That is whenever they show the creature. In fact, the budget was so low in this film for $150,000, which is extremely low budget, that they couldn't afford the full eight tentacles for the octopus. They only did six. They said they couldn't afford it. And in fact, Ray Harryhausen had to go to a craft shop to purchase the model for the ships that it was destroying. That's very low budget. <laughs> it is not the effect that I care so much about. It was the story. The story was boring. The characters were cliched. The romance was overtaking the film. And I didn't really care for it, especially with the low triangle that was into the film. I really respect Faith Donneray's character, or actually herself as an actress, because she was doing the best she could with the material. But the whole love triangle was very boring. and as they were trying to make her character in something else, trying to figure out which man she loves. It was very cheesy, over the board, and not something the film actually needed. People came to see a monster film, at least for that time, or even today, and that's what you expect to see. You want to see a monster film, even with its low budget. That has a lot to do with the writing, along with the pacing, which was a much better improvement for the next year movie, Earth vs. The Flying Saucer, which was a big improvement towards that. I do, however, enjoy the open sequence of the 1956 science fiction world as the sequence title begins showing. It has everything that you want to expect from this type of movie, and I really appreciated that. The beginning was pretty much okay, it's average, but it was that the creature, which I very much enjoy whenever the creature did show because it was very minimal, and also that of the colorization process they put for this DVD. Now, the movie was originally filmed in black and white, but I very do much enjoy the colorization process, and it's actually really grand. I enjoy it. I have the DVD, and this is what the DVD looks like. So, as you can tell, it is like the same year that came out in 2007 when I had waited for this movie, although I have seen this movie plenty of times in black and white. I had to say, the color is better. It has the same two discs as the Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, and it has great special features, although a lot of the special features that's in this film is also the same one for Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, or vice versa, whatever you want to say. There is more in the other movie, but there are some interesting things right here. Get the commentary by Ray Harryhausen, 
along with some others, which is actually pleasant to listen to because I like to hear their thoughts and the history behind making this movie. There was something I learned from listening to the commentary on the movie was that the, the scene with the Golden Gate Bridge, there was a couple of things. One, the bridge and the car that was used in the stop motion was completely made of lead, which is very interesting when you think about that. Also with that is that the bridge was originally supposed to be just gray or black, but Ray Harry Allison was very determined to paint it, even though it was not golden color, it was more of a rustic rust color. He actually got it approved, so it had like that orange rust color. And if it wasn't for that, we never would have got the colorization for this film. So, you know, thank you, Ray, for that. Thank you for sticking to your guns because this film will have continued being black and white and we have never been appreciated with the colorization of it that is made today. So if you really want to watch a movie about an octopus or actually having an octopus inside of the film, I would probably recommend 1954's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which was made a year before this one, Walt Disney film. Or that of 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla, where King Kong starts fighting off the octopus on Skull Island. I can't remember. I really want to say it was the island. And why I can't remember the name of the island, I can't remember. I probably have to rewatch that movie again. As I said, this is a film that I don't mind watching, but it's not something that I would put as a first pick for a Ray Harryhausen film. I had someone on the Facebook group, his name is Gary Haskell, and he had posted a picture, and I asked if I could use a picture. He said, sure. It was a picture he'd taken in 1989 about the miniature set that was actually filmed there. Here is that picture, and he filmed it during his visit at the Forrest J. Ackerman's house. I don't know where that's at, but it sounds really cool. And thank you very much for that picture. I grandly appreciate it. And now it's for everyone else to see watching this. So that's some really cool stuff. And I really like that. So this is what the YouTube video I was talking about. This is what I want to be about, about interacting and talking with other people and tell me your visits and your memories and so forth. So like I said, if you have that, let me know down in the comments below. That is all I have for this review. So I hope that you have a lovely day and I'll see you around to the next review. I'm not sure what I'm reviewing next. It's going to be somewhere. I believe it's on another page. That you should check out. That's it. Take care. Cheers.